Welcome to September. We're going to take a look at the energy the first week of the month here, and a lot of it is going to be largely dominated by Uranus going retrograde. Let's talk about it. And there it is right there, Uranus going retrograde on Sunday the 1st. And we, uh, Ray Merriman said on the Saturday podcast, well, we just got rid of the trickster, Mercury, in its retrograde for three weeks. Now we have the disruptor, its higher octave, Uranus, which goes retrograde today and doesn't come out until the end of November. This is a long retrograde, and we are going to be feeling it. But look, it's going to be there for everybody on the planet. So whether it's disruptor or I know somebody who got a really good sudden surprise this weekend already, that there it is. Uranus is sitting still. It's stronger so to kick off the week, we have this really strong, and this surprise that came was like so welcome. So there's two sides to every coin, and we have to just know that there are going to be some disruptions and some wonderful blessings under this energy. So that's how we kick off the week. And I think how this plays out is going to really set the tone for uh, the rest of the month, and this extends into October as well. Let me show you one of the other dynamics that is going to be at play here through the week. We know that Mars and Jupiter have been acting upon us heavily. I put a video on all the socials about this early Sunday morning, just talking about how we can get through this. But it is going to get better because every day this week until the end of the week, and I'll show you when Mars goes into Cancer... <laughs> the sign of cancer, which is water and emotions and touchy-feely. And Mars is this big, bold wrecking ball, like, let's go, let's get it done. Or let's, if you're in the way, boom, you know, right? Get out of the way. Well, every day, Mars is going to be getting further away from Jupiter. And I looked up some mythology. I've got to bring uh, more mythology into the Fun Astrology podcast in Roman mythology, Mars was Jupiter's son. So Jupiter is the Lord of the gods, right? The Lord Jupiter. And Mars represents war, it was the god of war, and also of agriculture, growing, providing our food. So there's the initiation. There's this vitality about it. It's think about springtime, Mars, Aries, the springtime sun. It's time to plant. The ground is no longer going to freeze. Let's grow, not let's go, let's grow. So we can think about that positive side. When we want to lock onto the positive side of Mars, we can think of it as joined at the hip with Jupiter. And then, of course, Mars, Mary, Venus. But we're not going to get into that here. But <laughs> it's like, oh, fun stories. So another, let's see, another dynamic this week is the Oracle planet this is set to Sunday. Let me change this chart real quick and we will take a look at Monday because then you can see or we'll go to Tuesday. And here's why I wanted to show you Tuesday because I'm recording this early. This is the time I just hit current now. So you can see it's just a tick before sunrise. Sun's coming up through the windows there. You can see it upstairs right over here. Boom. Well, right there, sun's coming in through that window. But Mercury is our oracle planet. Now that's the planet that breaks the sunrise horizon, which is the rising sign here on the equal house system. And that's the first planet that's up in the sky. So we're back to Mercury now for a while until they catch each other, the sun and Mercury. Now Mercury will finally you overtake the sun. And when that happens, then we will have Mars as the Oracle planet and it will be in Cancer. So that's kind of what's going on with the Oracle planet. And speaking of Mercury, on Monday, it is in a trine aspect to Chiron. We talked about this on Monday's podcast. This is a good favorable aspect. And you know, when I see this, whenever this comes up, I just, for some reason in my mind, and this is not astrologically correct, and people could argue all day long, I just think there's some kind of a connection between Mercury and Chiron, uh, especially for how we play this out, because Chiron represents karmic wounds that we've brought into this life for the purpose of resolving, not for them to be a wrecking ball, although they can be. We might be paying karmic debt back, but the ultimate objective is, let's fix this. 
let's resolve this and move on in this lifetime. Let's get over this so we don't drag it into the next one. That takes a twofold approach. It takes us doing the inner work of our soul but it also takes reprogramming our mind, and that's what Mercury represents. So this little window this week gives us this opportunity to go into our mind and reprogram some of these things around these wounds. And to do that, we have to be conscious of the wounds. Where Chiron is in your chart represents where those wounds might be. It could be, uh, let's say, the eighth house. That's where mine is. The eighth house is, uh, well, uh, actually, I look at Chiron in two different houses. I look at it in whole sign, and there it's in the ninth house. And then in the equal house system, it's in the eighth house. Other people's money, inheritances, etc., which has been a big issue in my family here lately. And the ninth house, spirituality or religion which also has been a constant source of a wound. So that's, uh, you can look at where your chart is and then obviously the planets that it aspects also paint that picture. But there's a really good window this week to do this both inner work, which is always there, but also to bring it up into our mind and let's think about it and what decisions could we make to gain a different outcome. These are the things of this powerful trine aspect between Mercury and Chiron. Starts on Monday, but we've got the week to play with it. Tuesday of this week is really the big energy week, and this is the first of the two aspects on Tuesday. Mars, 29 degrees, in, and this isn't exact. I don't have this set to exact, but Mars at 29 degrees Gemini is uh, in a square aspect with Neptune in Pisces. Now, this is all about lies and deceptions. This is the more shadow side of Neptune, the illusions that we're telling ourselves. See, and if we tie this in to this uh, Mercury trine, then we're, we're talking about really getting real with ourselves. Quit, <laughs> quit looking through the fog. Quit fooling yourself about where you are. This is some of the examination I've been doing in my own life. I've just sat down over this weekend and I've been looking at, Thomas, where are you just lying to your own self? That's what this is about. Mars now could bring some conflict around this area, and that's going to be interesting with Uranus the Disruptor going on. So caution ahead of this. It's an aspect, again, that's going to be with us all week. But that's the first of these two powerful aspects on Tuesday. One to be respected. Don't fear it. Get on the positive side. Remember what we just talked about with Mars. Let's grow it's growing season, so let's grow through the tension that this might present. And who knows, maybe it could be tied into these others, and maybe this is the whole picture of what might unfold or what might come into your life. It might be looking at those old wounds and pulling the mask off and look at it for what it really is. Now, the other aspect on Tuesday I'm excited about because we are going to introduce you to a new contributor to the Fun Astrology podcast, Elisa Dixon. And she looked ahead at the chart when we talked about this, and she wanted to tackle Venus conjoining the south node of the moon down here in Libra. And of course, that makes it opposite the north node in Aries. So she does a great job. And I hope you'll check the audio podcast out on Tuesday because she talks about how we can work with this Venusian energy around the South Node. And I'm going to leave it with her to, to, to disclose what she's talking about here. But what she is saying, I mean, one of the things with Venus ruling Libra in uh, conjoining the South Node is we have an aspect or an opportunity here through this aspect to take a look at love and, and how we love in a whole different way. Because the opposite side with the North Node up in Aries, we still have that war paradigm. And we know that the Hamas, that whole situation started under this, that tragedy, that human tragedy that's just going on and on and on. Can't we bring peace? Why do we have to be at war, right? Well, this is a way to really re-examine that with, with Venus conjoining the South Node of the Moon. So that's the other big aspect. That's a big theme for the rest of this week 
and that's Tuesday evening. Now roll the chart up to Thursday. I've got this to Thursday. It actually happens at 345 Eastern on Wednesday afternoon. Mars enters Cancer. You can see here it's already trekked 26 degrees by Thursday. But Mars now is in the sign of Cancer, which it's not so compatible with. It is going to be a quick transit, won't be in there very long, but for the next several weeks, we're going to be feeling this effect of Mars kind of fighting its environment. So it could make Mars a little more grumpy. So there's the shadow side that could possibly come out, the agitation the aggression, the even on the mundane, the macro could be the war symbolism kind of thing could come out under this aspect. So just be careful. If there's a potential conflict for the next about six weeks, potential conflict, back away from it. You know, the old count to five, count to three, count to 10, count to whatever, but just count and keep counting until you kind of pull away from it. That's the tension that we've been feeling with this Mars-Jupiter conjunction. Mars is moving away, but it's not moving away into the best real estate. So that's what we've got for now the next, I mean, this takes us all the way through October. And Mars then in October ends up in this T-square, basically like this. So that conflict is going to be continuing as well. And that goes on. So like I said, through the next at least six to eight weeks that we're going to be feeling that whole thing. So yes, we get some reprieve here, but we also pick it up with a different dynamic with cancer. So we'll have to see how that shakes out, but just be aware of that. That's one to, don't let that get far from your mind. Now we talked about Mercury and we talked about Uranus. Let's put them together. This is Saturday and you see that, look at here, Mercury at 27 degrees in Leo is in a square with Uranus at 27 degrees. So uh, Taurus, here is the lower octave, here is the higher octave, and boom, we get a square. So <laughs> like Ray said, well, we get the disruptor on Sunday the 1st, and by Saturday the 7th, we get a square to Mercury, the two combined energies in a tense aspect. I don't know. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, uh, so be careful. Uh, I've been talking to Mary here. Uh, we live about, mm, so this neighborhood is about, I think it's like nine miles by the crow flies line of sight to the San Andreas Fault. And all the newspapers in Los Angeles and all this, they're talking about, um, you know, the, the probability of the big one. Well, I've heard nothing but the big one all of my life. You know, Southern California was going to break off and float out into the Pacific. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I look at this and I go, okay, well, at least the insurance uh, earthquake policy is paid up. So who knows? Who knows? I just figured not to fear it. Go, you know, take this opportunity and um, not worry about things that could happen. I mean, I lived in Tornado, Tornado Alley all of my life, basically. So um, who knows what could happen with all these things. But the sudden shakeups, yes. So now in this relationship, Uranus has the upper hand. So it's the more dynamic of the two. Then on Sunday of next week, I wanted to go ahead and show you these now because, again, we'll be moving toward them, and they are going to be a theme of energy this week. Notice how the days are getting shorter, right? So as we've just been clicking through this during the tenure of this video, notice how, oh, see, the sun's coming up through the window there. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, over here, that one, Whoop, right there. Um, the sun now, which was, as I've just been clicking the same time, was above the horizon. Now, by next Sunday, it's still below the horizon at this same time. But on Sunday, it opposes Saturn. So Sun opposite Saturn is always a big aspect. It's a big aspect for us personally, and it's a big aspect in the collective. So personally, we have to really be ready to deal with some karma that might come up. I mean, that's just the bottom line of Sun opposite Saturn is Lord Karma at this point. There could be something that might pull. But see, this is where if we get on the other side of the aspect and we anticipate it through this week, so we have all this work, see, that we can be doing. Remember, this and this is positive. This and this is bringing out the truth. 
And now it's just kind of bundled in, bringing it all right into our sun, our life force of what might we take a look at that we could really alter as far as something that's in the past, some kind of karmic debris that Saturn might be willing to bring to our attention. So what I like to do with these is sit down with my journal, get on the right side of the aspect and just ask, what do you have to show me here? What would you like me to grow through? And then feel into what comes up. What's there? What's there for you? What comes to mind? What kind of text message comes on your phone? What email do you get? What kind of sign? Maybe a synchronicity. So that universe will show you if you ask. I had an amazing experience oh, a couple of weeks ago now. Again, related to my family. But I just asked and I received. So ask and you shall receive. Sit down with this and say, hey, I want to be on the really positive side of everything going on here. So show me what I'm supposed to see, what I'm supposed to do, what I can change. Let me see the truth about my life, about who I am, who I'm being in the world, who I'm being for others. Let me see that clearly. And then if there's something I need to change, boy, I am willing to roll up my sleeves and do the work. That's the positive side. The other side is Saturn could be that big club. And I mean, if it has to get our attention, it has very efficient ways of doing that. So I, I like staying on the positive side. I found it to be much easier and a lot smoother and a lot more fun. Now, there's another aspect that is coming, not here yet, but Sunday also represents the 21-day moon wobble. All right, what are we talking about by that? Let's clear all this other stuff off of here. About every upper 80s, 86 to 88 days, it's almost in step with the Mercury retrograde timing, although they don't happen necessarily at the same time like they won't now. Mercury's out of retrograde the sun will either conjoin one of the nodes of the moon or if the sun were over here would be in a square aspect to the nodes of the moon that's not i'm, I'm doing a terrible job of drawing a square but you get the idea it's 90 degrees square or conjo conjunct to the nodes so in this case we've got the south node conjunct and that happens 21 days from Sunday. And I'm sorry I didn't write it down in my notes, but it's too far out right now to, to worry about. This um, Carl Payne Toby, back in the 30s, 40s, 50s, wrote about this as a phenomenon that he noticed particularly natural phenomenon kinds of things happen during this period, and he dubbed it the moon wobble. I mean, the moon has nothing even to do about it other than the nodes of the moon get wobbly. And this can affect us personally as well. So he recommended mercury retrograde kind of on steroids. And I know we just got through with it, and now we have Uranus in retrograde, and now we have a moon wobble. Well, what he said is, don't, don't get married during one. I have to go back and see. <laughs> like, hmm. Um, don't buy a house. You know, don't do all the things that you wouldn't do. Don't buy a car. Uh, big major life decisions. Put it off. How long does it last? Well, some people advocate a 21-day time frame before this exact conjunction which puts us Sunday, so just count three weeks ahead, and there's the exact. And most people say that it tails off for seven days as a separating. I've noticed that it really, the action happens before, and it seems that the action happens in that three-week, 21-day to 14-day. To it seems that that's where most of this action that I've seen takes place. The Hamas war we just mentioned started just before the 21-day period of the moon wobble back in October. So it definitely can affect things. 9-11 uh, happened during a moon wobble. The Oklahoma City bombing, the USS Cole attack, all of those were moon wobble experiences. So I've just noticed, and yes, things can happen. So something, again, to be aware of and make decisions on we have to live our lives, but just realize that there is that out there. 
And if you want to choose to follow it, some people don't. My broadcast partner on the podcast, Old Soul, New Soul, Robert Glasscock, he doesn't, he doesn't think of it, which is kind of interesting because Carl Payne Toby was best friends with Grant Louie, and Grant Louie was the mentor of Linda Goodman, who wrote the most popular astrology book ever, Sun Signs by Linda Goodman, who Robert Glasscock traveled with and mentored from, learned from, and helped her in her astrological practice for four years in the late 60s and early 70s. So it's like, I mean, Carl Payne Toby is just two steps back from Linda, one step back really, and significantly impacted this. I've noticed a correlation, but I just think it's something, again, as we're looking and reading the energies of the sky, we would be amiss not to at least acknowledge it and take a look at it. So that sets up our week. I hope that it is wonderful for you, and I hope that Uranus in retrograde, because you are living on your highest timeline, gives you all kinds of pixie dust, magic, and fun surprises. I'll see you on the Daily Podcast Monday through Saturday. Have a great week.